Oh, nice. All right, here we go. This is Brian Sebastian, Movie Reviews and More, Women on TV.TV, IT247 out of Franklin, Tennessee. And this is part two of this young lady. I have to start with this, and I never start with anybody's numbers, but hey, when you have 2.3 million followers on your Instagram, my mouth drops at that, because I'm not into followers, but her followers are different. Because not only is it as one of the top nine most powerful women in the world, and the influence is the top 12 and the top 100, that alone says something. But no, she doesn't stop there. A fashion icon, fashion blogger, traveler, and she's from Italy. And I love Italian women because it's just so, how do you say it? Whatever. <laughs> A TV and radio host, Thank Andy, you. can't forget this, yeah. best-selling author because it is about books. If it's not for books, we have to keep reading it, always keep expanding our mind, right? So for, if I left anything, pronounce your name for everybody because you say it with flair. Yes, Simonetta Lean. <laughs> See, I can't say that yet. Yeah. So uh, again, here in America, they say Simonetta. If you want to say with Italian accent, it's Simonetta. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I like it in the, uh, like Simonetta. Because, you know, when it's Simonetta, it reminds me of my mother when I was a child. Like, Simonetta. So Simonetta is more like, you know, it's my new life. <laughs> here and in then America. the other thing is Thank that so is... When did you get your U.S. citizen? Recently or was it last year? Uh, yes, very recently. I was actually at the very beginning of this month. So, All right, so congratulations. Talk I'm about that first. What's American that feeling like? Well. Because that's not easy. Oh, no, that's excited. not easy now. Say it again, I'm sorry. I said it's not easy to get that now. Talk about that feeling. No. It's very difficult, very difficult. So a lot of people think that just, I, I married an American um, man who actually I met over Italy and then we decided to, um, you know, come to America together, come back actually to America together with him. Uh, everybody thinks, oh, you marry an American man, it will be so easy. Actually, it took me over five years and a lot of papers, a lot of also uh, uncertainty because I've done everything legally I've done all the process but still like it takes in you know, a lot of time to have replies I remember there was a moment in which you know they gave me my first green card and then um, the first green card actually lasts two years and then you have to have uh, what they call a permanent one which is not permanent actually it lasts 10 years so in that a uh, moment that I was waiting for my second green card I just had a um, honestly a piece of paper from the government that was saying hey you're waiting for your green card so i was going to run you know with this piece of paper it's like hey you know so with this kind of limbo it's like you know is everything okay uh, a lot of people you know don't understand of course the the you know if you're an immigrant and you know you're you're here and you're just waiting for an answer it's very you know nerve-wracking but hey oh, finally we made it and i became an american citizen so that gives me a lot of you know sense of pride. I've actually gone through that frustration through, uh, with two of my co-hosts. We were able through the Hollywood Film Festival, I was able to get two of them, their immigration. Uh, this is before President oh. Trump came in, and then now one of them, Katarina Gazayev, okay. she's waiting for hers. And I, I, I know a little bit of what that feeling is like, because I can feel the frustration. So again, I say, Absolutely. I know it wasn't easy for you. And yes, you did yeah. everything right, because all your qualifications, which you have, like I said, I've been telling everybody about you since last Monday. I'm honored to know who you are and the and stuff that you've gone through. Thank you. easy. Talk about all the stuff that you built up at a young age. That's not easy. It really isn't. Yes. No, that's not easy. Especially when, you know, I always, and, and to me, it's, again, it's a sense of accomplishment. I don't come from, you know, uh, a family in the in the industry. My father is a medical doctor who completely built up his career all by himself. Uh, uh, my mother is a psychotherapist, and she also completely built her own career. They don't work for insurance company. They you know they are just they work with patients. So I always had a, a lot of sense of uh, gratitude you know towards them because they are free. You know they always taught me how to be a service of others. And, but of course, again, you know, I didn't, when I, especially when I came to America, I had no connection, no, no, nothing. I had, you know, complete to restart 
by myself and of course like you're saying being a young age and you know starting honestly all over i mean even in italy it wasn't easy but of course it was my country so i got to a point that i was very well um you know recognized in my country and then of course when i came to america i had to restart everything from scratch from my personal life so, you know when i like really get in a house and set it up and then we came here with not much money so we we had to literally i mean i was painting and my husband was fixing the lights you know we, we really you know did everything from scratch and and you know slowly and actually slowly but even I mean, in a quick process, in a way, I mean, I see it slowly, but people from outside told me, hey, you have accomplished so much, you know, in such a small period of time. Uh, I was able, you know, to, again, be recognized, like you said, as, you know, one of the top in the world, grew my Instagram, you know, so much and have so much, you know, love and appreciation from people, putting together, you know, the Simona Colleen show, having my non-for-profit, the Wishful Foundation, having my company of Sonia Partners, being awarded by Inc. 5000 as, you know, one of the fastest growing company. So, you know, it, it gives me a lot of, um, you know, joy and also a lot of, um, you know, if someone comes and asks me, hey, how did you do it? I mean, I work very, very hard and I was always very, you know, inspired by what, again, my parents taught me to be the sense of integrity and sense of, you know, compassion and giving back and honestly I would not change it for anything else I mean every one of us maybe had their moments when you could have had you know your shortcut you know especially when I was a little bit younger of course I was also an actress so I had you know my moments in where you know kind of dark moments and I always say no and a lot of people told me hey you could have accepted you know that easy way but I felt hey if I accept the easy way then you know I own uh, to someone else, you know, myself. And so I said, no, I prefer, you know, to take the, you know, the regular road. And that is something that, again, I want to give back as my experience to the young generation that maybe, you know, they're frustrated, say nothing is happening. It's hard. I know it's hard. So don't you think that, you know, it wasn't a hard for other people that you see successful now? It, 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 it was hard. It's still hard. But again, if I can be an, an example that you can make it, you know, clean and again, without having to give, you know, any of your soul away, but just, you know, look at yourself in the mirror and be proud of that. Maybe you help somebody, you know, today, then I'm, I'm, I'm happy and I, I feel accomplished. You know, it, it, you three things you said there. One is in service. We are in service. We're in service to help people. Yes. Whether they realize that because of, of the outfit and the platform that we have, and it is the case. The second thing is, it's not easy. I've had a lot of my friends come over from, you know, the UK, New Zealand, Australia. They're still coming over. And, and, I, and I know what it's like because I, I've got a chance to go and visit them. And I, it's an honor for me as that black man that they come to me and hey, my, my daughter or my son is in your hands. And I don't take that very lightly because the United States can be a dangerous place. And, you know, so Absolutely. I wanted someone, they said, hey, my daughter's coming over to visit you or my daughter's in your hands. You're not, I don't want to screw that up. And I've been lucky, very fortunate so far. So I understand what those breaks are like. And I always tell people, don't come to Los Angeles, don't come to California unless you got it. Not a lot of money, a year's worth of money, not three months because it's so expensive. Two, I agree with you. That's not to take that short list because it's not for everybody. And three, you know, it's not going to happen overnight. All the interviews that I've ever done, whether it's Brad Pitt or Oprah or whoever the case may have been, their success didn't happen overnight. It just didn't. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think that that is a message that we have to give, especially right now when you know the world is changing a lot of things are shutting down there are people that are literally saying what am i doing you know and and they get lost and they think oh you know if i'm not succeeding right now i'm not going to succeed and that's not the case of course we are again the world is resetting as we're saying we, we're definitely are in a reset uh period it's true a lot of the old ways are you know maybe being substituted by you know some new ways and i understand right. that it's very painful and um and but again the, the important thing is when i for instance interview for the entrepreneur magazine or for forbes entrepreneurs it gives me a lot of you know joy to see that there are instead entrepreneurs that are making it and my biggest 
I must suggest is to be very flexible and you know don't be stuck with again if you have your goal what I understand and in order to achieve that goal it's not always you know linear like you know be ready to you know open up yourself and see that maybe again that is your goal I if I, if I thought you know, when, when I started all this journey, of course I had my goal, but I didn't know at that time that, you know, I would have got it towards, you know, so many different projects. And so, you know, be humble, be ready to, you know, accept if someone comes and say, hey, would you like to do this? Try to say yes, you know, now I'm talking to a really young generation, you know, say yes, do experiences, go because only, you know, for instance, studying is very important but then you have to practice so be you know humble and jumping into opportunities even if you don't get paid right away we all have to you know go through it i mean i've done so many projects just to to go and learn you know but then again it will be paid off i did the same thing there was uh, you know i, I figured that was 10 years that i did interviews before i got paid if you can imagine that yes. so you know and, and again i'm not married i don't have any kids I did it for 10 years and I did, you know, would I want to turn down interviewing Sean Connery before he retired? And the answer is no. Would I get paid to do it? No, I didn't get paid to do it, but I got the interview and it turned out to be his last interview. And I said, hell yes. Yeah. So I look back at the because right now we're at 5.6 million views a day in County. Tomorrow we switch over to 5.7. And again, it didn't happen overnight, but two years ago we started turning things around. And, and I know you can identify that, that that's why we're going to start to put stuff together because it will work. I, I identify with what you're creating and what you're doing because that's what I'm wanting to do with the girls. You know, when you have 10 co-hosts, yes. I want, you know, you know, my success today depends on their success with what we did yesterday, if that makes sense. I don't go anywhere without sure. them shining in here. And like I said, it's a woman's world. It's not a man's world now, like James Brown, the performer, used to say. It's a world because we're in the age of Aquarius. And the sooner you get it as a male, the better you will be able to adjust. Because it's not a coincidence that everybody, everything's come crumbling down now. It had to be that way, right? Yes. That's very true. We have to go towards a more accepting society where you know again uh, we, we need our men but we need our men to you know support us and you Absolutely. know do things together to you know kind of bring in this mother nature that of course women have you know inside of us and you know and so that we can really go back to what I think it's you know very important which are you know certain natural values that you know as society maybe we we forgot so definitely you know we're crumbling because eventually you know that um masculine um energy uh in, i could say like again we need the men to support us we don't need the men to you know suppress us <laughs> so you know so we can work together and i think that that is definitely positive you know to find a more um a communion you know between between all of us and also among races you know among cultures among uh, religions it's very very important that we understand that when we say that we're all in this together but for real you know i don't want it yeah. just to be a slogan it's true we're all humans it, to me it doesn't matter if you're white yellow black christian muslim i i mean as long as you are a good human being and you know and you are here for the right reason to understand that life is so short and you know we need to do something to better human the humankind you know all together then you know we are on board as again as humans i think that is very important nowadays yeah, you know, I've been practicing Buddhism for 32 years. And one of the things they would always say, it's about faith, practice, and study. And you said it. Yes. You never forget that because if you don't know how to do something, you always say yes. I literally, I put, I remember I put two girls in front of Simon Cowell. And I said, don't be surprised if he asked you to sing because you're never going to get this opportunity again. One, yes. you, you know, Simon asked him, sing, sing, sing something for me. She goes, oh, I'm not prepared. I told her in advance, be prepared. <laughs> and at that point, I just had to let her go because you don't get another opportunity like that. The other yeah. one went on to American Idol. And it's wow. a thing. Anytime we put someone in front of them, you gotta be prepared. Say yes that you can do it because even if you have to learn it on a job because you never know what would that, that, that experience will lead to. That's very true. That's very, very true. 
Talk and by about the way, your wisdom foundation. I've, I've been practicing Buddhism as well. Oh, you are? <laughs> Congratulations. Yes, it's been like 15 years. Good for you. So. <laughs> Talk about your wish wall foundation yes. because that's a, I've been reading up more about that and the more I wrote about it, my, I really liked that. And with that, I've got this, it's called the restroom kit. Yes. Uh, hand sanitizers, so whenever you go to restrooms, everything, I found them four years ago. Now they're considered first responders because hospitals, police officers, firemen. Yes. That's very true. A new one come out. This is gonna go, I'm gonna make sure they send these to you for your foundation. Because women like Please. to find us for stuff like that. So when we go out, um, you need something to wipe your hands with, something when you go into a restroom, you know, now it's all about being clean because you have to. So that's one of the Absolutely. So I'm going to have them send them to, for you for your foundation. It will be also beautiful to see because I, with the foundation, I helped out a lot of women, for instance, in Africa. So maybe it could be, you know, through this brand, maybe, you know, we can send them some packages. I think that they would really appreciate it because, again, yep. in this you know, moment, um, of course, in general, uh, you know, there is a, a stigma a little bit, you know, in, in Africa, of, you know, really, you know, also because I was seeing that in the, in the box, it was also showing like the, uh, you know, women having their period, basically, you know, so that is a stigma that, you know, it, it's there because they really maybe don't understand, you know, the natural Yeah, and, and I'm going to put you in uh, touch I think with them. Bill and, and Melinda uh, Macy, I found them, uh, yeah, four years ago, and, and I was telling them about you the other day. So they were like, sure, let's, we'll talk, we'll send her whatever she needs to have. So that was a good thing at that point. Absolutely. Talk about Absolutely. your wishbone foundation. Very important. Yeah. And um, it's interesting that you, hello, someone is coming in. Hello, hello. <laughs> this is Victoria so, Renee. Uh, hi. Hi, hi, sweetie. Hi. Hello. Good, good. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about nice things. <laughs> we were talking about my non for profit. And, you know, it was interesting, Brian, as you were mentioning, you know, about Buddhism, uh, in a way, a lot of people don't know that that actually philosophy inspired me, uh, you know, towards the, the Wishwell Foundation, because again, I've been, uh, you know, working for over 10 years uh, over the concept of dreams and wishes, you know, and how those dreams and wishes can truly inspire us to be, you know, uh, the best version of ourselves and so with uh, um, humility I, I you know face a lot of um, um, how could you say challenges of course in, in yeah. the world as we all uh, can understand you know a lot of people really don't know what to dream or how to dream um, and um, sometimes of course they also again attached to what I call you know the small things that are of course not small things there's no such a thing as small things but what I try to do with the non for profit is kind of to inspire them to say, okay, maybe you start from one in a car and then, you know, you understand that there's much more in the world. You're showing you know? people and that they can get out of their own way and there's no limitations on what they're absolutely. capable of doing and that they can be, do and have anything. That's absolutely. amazing. Absolutely. Very inspiring. Absolutely. And the idea is that again, through the non for profit, we go and we grant those wishes that we feel that will impact the community. Oh. Because again, Yes, because again, what I want to, you know, give back as, as my, you know, personal con contribution to this world is the idea that all of us, you know, can do something. And so one of the things that make me, you know, uh, very proud is that I've shown many projects that, I, again, it's not that I have any superpower. I'm just a human that is very dedicated in, you know, doing something. And I was able to achieve a lot of projects. And I hope that that, you know, inspired and will inspire people to say, hey, if she did it, I can do it too, you know, because sometimes we think that do something good is so far away from us. And, you know, so again, yeah. that is, you know, my inspiration behind it. And also really to give a tool to people to dream. Because again, I, I saw that uh, how difficult it is to people. You go and say, okay, what are your dreams? And, and a lot of people, they don't know how to answer. You know, they think that they have so many dreams and inspiration and aspiration, but then they yeah. don't. So with the wishful, yes, the idea of the wishful was to really give them a platform 
where they can kind of be focused and write, you know, write their wishes. And that is also, you know, I'm also a counselor. It's one of my background. My mother is a psychotherapist. So she told me this, you know, that you need to be very focused when you are, you know, dreaming and understanding, you know, what you're no, asking yeah. to, to the universe. God, no, what, you, you have to it. know what you want. What do you want? People don't know what they want necessarily. Absolutely. And, and you, and most people, when they say, when you ask them what they want, they say, I want to be happy. But what does that look like for you? Absolutely. That's very true. And I've seen that if you don't really have a plan, and that's also what I want to inspire, you know, through the Wishful Foundation. That's why I, I try to put in a very uh, practical way. If right. you don't know what you're dreaming, what is your project, then the universe cannot respond to you. So again, uh, the Wishful Foundation is, is a 501c3. It's a very practical project, but now you guys know why I created it. I mean, there's much more. It was really as a human, you know, my you know, my, my intention to, Hey, kind of give you a, that tool that, you know, I was so blessed to have in my life. And, you know, uh, if I can, again, I don't want to teach anybody anything, but just inspire to dream more and be happier altogether. Because I truly think that in 2020 is our duty to be happy because if we are happy, we're, you know, really, you know, increasing the vibration of this world. So that's why it's our duty. It's not just, Hey, I'm happy. No, yeah. no, you have to put your into it yeah people just are regurgitating their the isness of the world and if they're not dreaming and and, and concentrating and focus what to happen and finding joy which is really the absent happiness with with that when there's bad things happening and still having happiness you know yeah. that if you can find that place then you then you're you're golden absolutely but you have to focus absolutely. on that and so that's you know, to answer to your question, Brian, that is, you know, what the Wishful Foundation does and the true, again, motivation behind and why I started because I was inspired, you know, to, to do so. It's okay. it. Well, you know, it, and it's funny because she was supposed to be on a show with Terry and I'm like, I'm like, if Victoria likes this, wants to be, mm -hmm. there's something to it. All right, Victoria, what did you like about her? What did you know about her? Because I didn't know anything about her, but now we like each other. So what did you see? <laughs> <laughs> well, I like what everything I just heard, you know, I think we're, we're kind of cut from the same cloth in that way. Thank you. For sure. Thank you. I yeah. always say thank you to humans that, you know, understand, because again, it's, I don't take it for granted. I mean, um, unfortunately as humanity, um, a lot of us, uh, you know, forgot that again, we are all humans and Hey, if we don't better That's this, Okay. You know? That's it. We are all humans. Yes. And I wish that I, that's something that we can focus on uh, in like being a light to other people Absolutely. that people are people are people are people regardless of if they're homeless or they don't look like you or you guys have different political beliefs. Absolutely. It's uh, like a human being is a human being and like I, it would, it's beautiful to see someone showing them, everyone, that our connectedness. Just remind people. See, uh, I, again, I know that we are in a very, very difficult moment in our society. And that's why I talk about beauty. Because, again, we're literally, there's a fight right now between the good and evil. Yeah, it's a huge fight. Spiritual and why, warfare. Absolutely. Big. That's that's a big war that we have right now. And that's why I'm talking about duty. I mean, um, if again, there's nothing I always say there's nothing right or wrong to do in life. But again, if I can inspire someone instead of saying, Hey, I'm I'm bored during quarantine. Why don't you, you know, just focus yourself in studying, understanding, um, doing something for yourself to, you know, become a better human being, yeah. um, give back to your neighbor, you know, but, but with an intention, you know, to understand, hey, yeah. your actions are necessary because we are all connected. And this is actually it's not just a philosophy, it's science. I mean, oh. Jung taught, yes, yeah. or Jung, well, Jung is in, in, in the German pronunciation, but Carl Jung, um, you know, talked about the... Uh, collective and conscious and There's, that has been it's proven. real so, exactly so if you're happy i get that vibration if you are sad that's, i get that vibration and that's all that you can do is your you can't 
control everyone else's vibration. You just have to be the brightest light that you can be and be a light holder for other people. Absolutely. And in the meantime, of course, advocate and try to explain as, as much as possible. Like you say, let's leave, you know, our whatever differences because all the, honestly, political views, that's just a division. I mean, again, let's just remember that we're all human and hey, we can agree to disagree. Isn't that beautiful? Wouldn't that, we want know, that? Sometimes? Don't you want Absolutely. You want everyone to agree with every I'm, single thing. So boring, no, right? We need to have diversity. We didn't come here to have a completely plateaued experience in life. There's ups and downs, and there's different types of people with their own life experience that they're bringing to the table with their voice that only they could bring. Absolutely. The world needs who you were meant to be, and that's different from what everyone else was meant to be, and that's okay. Absolutely. There's room for all of us. Definitely. And especially, again, for people that you can disagree. I mean, like you said, we're here to, you know, to learn. Like planet Earth is a beautiful school. And right. If you, if, if I always agree with you and everything, I mean, I'm done. Like, okay, there's nothing to like, learn. Right? Um, yeah. Give me a new opinion. Like, let, I want to hear what you have to say. Like, that's the point. Like, we're, we need to, like, we're learning from other people. We're like, oh, I can, I want to know why you think the way you think. I want to, I want to hear what your standpoint you is. A, a, an important point, you were talking about, of course, you know, your background. And because, of course, you know, you, you become your beliefs because of your background. So, of course, you know, there are, there, there might be differences, you know, between us because I was raised in a way, you're raised in Frozen. another way. But again, yes, when you're back. But the, again, the, the good thing is that mm -hmm. we can all, you know, uh, have a have a discussion, and that is also something that I think it's very important that we're going to say because definitely there's a lot of hatred. That's you know, I'm here, I'm there. If I can give a message, it's like that you're there, you're there. Why don't you just can you know talk about it? And hey, you don't have to change your ideas. I'm I'm not here to change anybody's no. ideas. And I think that that is the message. You don't have to change, but you can listen. Mm -hmm. You can be open and receptive. You can be Absolutely. open and receptive. And, and it helps to not, being open and receptive means that for a moment that you're listening with your whole body, with full attentiveness, and you're not thinking about what your argument is or how do people get so caught up and winning the argument, they don't even know what they're really fighting about. <laughs> At the end, you know? like, okay, what was I talking about? See, this it, is why like, the whole women. point is this irrelevant. This is why Latoya and Terry and everybody else. Plus, we all like each other. <laughs> <laughs> we can't. We can't wait to get together, somebody, and, and travel. Matter of fact, have you been to Tennessee yet? Me? Yes. No, yes. never, never. We're gonna, like, we're gonna invite you, and the reason yes. we invite you with us because Victoria is gonna sing. This is in the South. This is Victoria's territory. So when we go to Tennessee, I feel like I just you're met coming with us. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Victoria, like Victoria, we're gonna take her to meet Edie. Mm -hmm. We're gonna take her to Graceland. We're gonna, you know, we're gonna take her to Saint. She'll Jean. love Edie. Why we love her charity? Because that. that and well, I'm already setting it up, already setting it up for the end of October based on how everything's there virus wise. Yes. Then to go to Dollywood. Yeah. So I've already nice. set it up. So you're coming with us. All right. Yeah. yeah. So Victoria, I tell her like why. Like tell her why Tennessee is important <laughs> for us. And you're singing for St. Jude's Hospital and your song, Better World. Talk about that. A Better Tomorrow? Oh, yeah. I uh, I have a song called A Better Tomorrow, um, very closely knitted to what that we've been talking about the last yes. couple of minutes, and you've been talking about since, for the last, since 11. Um, it's, the proceeds are all donated to St. Jude Children's Hospital. It's about people coming together and seeing the world and that, that, that there's, the world is getting getting better and not worse. That that yes. that there's hope for everybody, and that it just love, just having a loving environment and connectedness, not in like a cheesy way, but just in like a real, like re, it's Absolutely. real. You know, it's like real. Like you were saying, we were saying before. 
I mean, we are in somehow a war. So it's not a cheesy way. You are a warrior and yeah. you're a warrior of light. And it's you are, like I said, you have a responsibility. And I know yeah. it's not easy. Sometimes the negativity, you know, can can come. And that's why we have to, you know, bring our superpowers, you know, mm -hmm. out to be that light. But honestly, again, it's not cheese at all. It's honest, it's the way, the most practical yeah. thing that you can do nowadays. Because oh. literally, humanity is a stake. So if we don't, you know, yep. uh -huh. kind of put ourselves with that mentality, yeah. what are we doing for our children? A hundred percent. Yeah, I have been, I, I mean, that song means so much to me. It's one of my favorite oh, my songs I've ever done. I have been you Brian, send it to me you after this. this interview. Can I listen to oh, it? Oh yeah, absolutely. It's called A Better Tomorrow. It's on Beautiful. Spotify. All Beautiful. of things. <laughs> um, I've been in the studio for the last two weeks for 18 hours yes. every day. I've been totally locked in the in the studio. Yes. It's the first time anyone's been back. I had producers from New York coming in. Uh, producers from Connecticut. I had some writers from um, Rodney Jerkins camp and um, some dark child writers and just the, the synergy, I can't even tell. It was amazing. It wasn't even supposed to happen like this. Wow. Like literally every single day, 18 hours. We, I was totally shut off from the outside world. This is my first day of not being Except when I called her or text her. <laughs> I know. Yeah. I'm so tired, Brian. Like I had to get, um, steroids for my voice or I was just like losing it. But um, yeah, no, no, it was like, um, it was the most magical experience. It was just, I was in the studio and then we were working on this guy, uh, Walt, his, um, his records, he was doing 10 records. I was singing on some of his records. And then the next thing, you know, the producer, somebody from Atlantic uh, or from Capitol Records called a writer. That writer came in, brought in some writers from Rodney Jerkins. They came in, they brought somebody from, from Aristocrats, the big production team. And then they came in. And the next thing you know, I have like 10 people working mm -hmm. on my album. Wow. Every day. Good for you, Victoria. And you it deserve was, it. Yeah. That's I was amazing. It was, unbelievable and the crate and i'm i'm so excited I, I can't wait to show you guys like what yeah. we did it's the best song i've ever done oh, nice. well i've done i did a lot of songs but one of the songs is like hands down it's an undeniable smash i can't wait to show you guys like it's Yay. so much fun it's That's so beautiful. fun Thank yeah. you for your contribution because like, you know, music brings people together and we definitely need some, you know, <laughs> we do. We we do. Know. Yeah. Yeah. It literally, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm not solving the world's problems per se, but I'm, you know, I can, I'm doing what I, I can do. And Absolutely. that's what I do is music. And but like I said before, trust me, even like, and this is something that again, as a message we can give to everybody, this is science. It's not that it's like we we're saying it's cheesy. If you do your part, it's very important. There are so many people that say, but I don't know what to do with the world's problems. Well, start to do your part. And trust me, because of the collective and conscious, you are actually giving back big time to, to God, to humanity, to, to, to the universe, whatever you want to call it. Time. Absolutely. Big time. Do, do your part. Do the thing that makes you unique. You know, what, what's your gift? Give it back. Absolutely. That's it. Yeah. Absolutely. When you were named one of the top nine power women in the world, what was that feeling? Yes. What, what was your first reaction? Because I can only imagine what happened to you. Did you jump up and down? <laughs> Did you start dancing in the middle of your living room? Yes, yes. It's, you know, it's again, the idea of, you know, being together with uh, power women. It's something that, you know, gives me a lot of joy. And, uh, you know, being, of course, also recognized for something that, you know, it's uh, in that case, it was, you know, my TV show. 
because I was able to, you know, bring it up towards, you know, quarantine. And so everyone can understand, you know, how difficult that was because I had to, you know, restructure everything and be able to, you know, actually be, we being catapulted in the future in like, like that. I mean, this is the future. What we're doing right now, it's the future. Of Absolutely. course, I'm a hugger, so I want to hug you both. I was in Victoria. I know but, Victoria. But I'm, I'm missing Victoria. Yeah. I'm Victoria. Yeah. I know, I'm a hugger too. <laughs> but again, you know, what we're doing is that, of course, you know, in a way, and I also really think it's a, a very, um, I'm going to say, democratic way of, you know, doing what we're doing because, hey, we are giving, I mean, we're showing to everybody that it's actually possible. Before it was only towards, you know, studios, like even for fashion weeks, you know, it was only about A for invitation. And that's what we were also talking the other time that I truly envision that also fashion and other worlds will, you know, open up to, again, this future. And so opening up, <laughs> opening up, you know, the, 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 again, what we are doing to everybody. So I think that that is, you know, something that, again, is, um, it will open up the, the, you know, what we used to do in a different way to, you know, to everybody. I, I, don't, I don't like the fact that, again, people want to go to Fashion Week and they are, you know, left out. So maybe this that it's happening will allow them to see, you know, the, the fashion towards the fashion show towards maybe Zoom or towards their social media and all of that. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. Sorry, my dog is like dreaming. No, no oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> He's howling. I, I, I was hearing him and I actually was smiling inside because I just lost my dog last week. Oh my God. God. So as a dog lover, you can understand. I mean, it was so painful. So, you know, the I'm good sorry. thing is that we, we found an amazing veterinarian that um, with a lot of heart because that's a big problem right now that we basically, if you have, I don't know if people know, but if you have your dog or your animal that is sick, the majority of you know, veterinarians do not allow you to get in with your dog. And it's just crazy. And my dog was you know, about to die and I couldn't find a veterinarian that would allow me to be with him. And that was just so, I mean, uh -uh. it's like that, you know, that we're talking no. about, we are, you know, part of humanity lost their, you know, connection with humanity. And also, again, they have a profession as, you know, veterinarians slash doctors to, you know, serve. I was saying in the very beginning before the you, Victoria, jumped in, my father is a medical doctor and he works for himself and he never, you know, accepted money from insurance company or pharmaceutical companies. And that, you know, I didn't understand the power of my father until, you know, recently, because I understand how free he is and, you know, how uh, he's devoted to just, you know, really do good in, in humanity. And he's I've a seen, real you know, with, healer. Yeah. Yes. And I've he's seen killer, again yeah. with going through with my dog, you know, the, the, the really all this, craziness and you know all this we will literally we found finally a place that told us okay you can uh you know come in we brought our dog we actually literally drove two hours to get finally to this place and then they were allowing us to go inside with my dog only if we were euthanizing him and we were like no but i want you to have a visit you know want to see if there's something that we can do so it was very you know heartbreaking and finally we found a, a veterinarian with you know uh, compassion he said of course you can come in so we brought him in unfortunately you know it was almost 18 years old there was really nothing his kidneys you know where failed. So I had, of course, I never had to put a dog down in my entire life. I always prayed, you know, that he would sleep, you know, with me. And then maybe one day I would have, you know, found him, you know, that it passed the bridge. But unfortunately that didn't happen. But at least I know that I gave him all that I could, you know, to, to be at peace. And then also the beautiful part is that, again, I found some good human beings. Imagine that not only they accepted us, they even sent us flowers for our loss. And then, you know, they helped us to cremate him. And that actually gives me a lot of peace because now I have this beautiful uh, box, wooden box, you know, with the name of my dog here with me. So it's like that, you know, of course, it's a, it's a process. It's a grieving process. But right now, at least I can see him. I know that he's there with me. And then maybe another furry friend will will come in our lives and so actually shout out to instead all the veterinarians and all the doctors that are good doing the good things right now and they're not you know 
uh, leaving people behind or animals Have some behind. Compassion. Yeah. Yeah. I have to tell you, that's, that's one of the toughest things I ever had to do too. And I did it all three times. The dogs weren't mine, but they were mine because we were connected by energy. And one of the toughest things is walking in with your animal and not walking out with that. That's, that's, that's not easy. Oh yeah. Wow. Very not easy. And that's why with my husband, we said if we wouldn't found, you know, someone compassionate that also, you know, really guided me, because I'll be honest, I felt guilty. I, I asked him, I said, well, you know, again, call it God, universe, life will be upset, you know, with me for doing so. And they were actually, first of all, of course, I've seen, you know, the blood works and really he was totally intoxicated. His kidneys were completely gone. And so he told me, he said, you can even bring it home and, you know, allow him to, you know, go naturally, but it will be in an excruciating pain. So you don't want do that. It. No. You know, so actually, that. they were, you know, really guiding me and explaining that that was actually an act of compassion. And he was, he was ready, you know, it was like, I looked at his eyes, he was ready. So it was one of the most difficult things for me. But yeah, again, they I felt, they felt nothing. You felt no pain, did not have to suffer. He just, it was exactly. just a deep sleep. It's, that's the better way to do it. You did the right thing. Thank you. And again, yeah. now it's with me in this little box. And then I have, you know, they even, their um, niece also took a, a, a paw print. That was also very sweet of them. <laughs> and, you know, that gives me a lot of hope for humanity. Again, like I said, it was very hard. I can tell you that we literally found 15 veterinarians that, you know, uh, did not accept us. But at the end, hey, we found one that, you know, so that's all that matters. So, and that to me, is actually representing, you know, the, the spiritual war that we are right now so That's definitely nice. seems that evil is winning and I, what i want to say to people is that you know do not give up because again i had to go through 15 until i found one i know that again it seems that the evil is winning but at the end it didn't win so we all have to be united in that victoria 100 percent um, i want her to meet edie because that would uh, they they would really like each other oh Wait, what? You you were cutting out. What'd you say? I said I want her to meet Edie Han because they would they yeah. offer inspiration to me. Tell her who Edie is. Tell me. Edie is my mother in law. She's my husband Link's mom. She's um man, she's like a, Link calls her slash. She's she's lived nine lives. She's everything uh, slash other thing. Yeah. She's an author. She's authored over forty two books. Oh wow! Mm -hmm. With Art House, and um, she's interviewed everybody. Um, Buddy Killing. She she co-authored a book with Buddy Killing, and um, you know she Dolly, she's interviewed Dolly Parton and a gazillion people. Uh, Presley family. So her mother and Elvis Presley's mother were sisters. So she grew up. Oh, I see. Yeah, um, just being you know, babysitting for Elvis's daughter. Yeah. And, and so she's, she's been around, she's seen some stuff. She's, she's, uh, she's got a foundation and uh, Edie Han Foundation. She does a lot of charitable work. Nice. You would love her. Oh. I'm gonna hook you up with her. And then that was because of that, I chose her film, The Last Christmas, the documentary on her relationship with the, her family, uh, the Packer Hood family, and then Elvis Presley. Um, I put it in the Hollywood Film Festival, ended up winning, and then Victoria came in, Link came in, and then that's kind of how we all got together. Yeah. In, the show in Tennessee, that was the first show I got a million views on with, the, with Edie. And then the wow. so, so Victoria, the second show is at 800, I mean, it's at 922,000 views. So by the end of August, that show will be at a million views too. So again, it talks about what we've all been talking about, taking a chance on people actually going and being in service and actually helping people and healing them, whether it's through music, whether it's through movies, or whether it's being authors, you know? Absolutely. Especially those strong women, because like I said, without you strong women, I wouldn't be where I am. It's really because of the women. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. I love and that. Also, and also, also through social media, because again, I always say, I know that social media is, it, it has, you know, both sides. It has the, 
good and the bad side. So the bad side is, of course, you know, a lot of mental health, uh, you know, issues that I've created to a lot of people. Uh, there's, of course, a lot of controlling. You know, we've seen, you know, how they're censoring stuff. So all that, of course, is very negative. On the other side, though, you know, we can use it in a positive way and use it for right. the good. You know, and really, you know, sharing information, good information, inspiring people. So that is another personal battle that I have, you know, right now to really inspire people to use social media because, hey, because of social media, now we get even the news, some of, I mean, I would call maybe more real news, like, you know, quicker because again, we don't have to believe in just what they blindly, you know, that they just give us. I mean, there are people that, maybe you know you maybe get a news and then there's someone that is filming and say hey it's not like that and say oh you know so at least you know we, we, we are waking up 100 percent. i think people are waking up more than more than we realize and sometimes the things mm -hmm. that seem like the worst case scenario like the really dark things that happen in life is really a stepping stone for people to to wake up so it's absolutely it might actually be in your benefit and not such a detrimental thing that you thought that it was Absolutely. And I honestly think that whoever, of course, gave us social media also <laughs> thought, hey, I can control them. And they know that. And they didn't think maybe that we as humans would have used it to our advantage. So goodbye. Right. But we're using your, your tools yeah. to our advantage. I know, I know, I, mean, I, get the point. I know that they know everything about me. I understand that I have nothing to hide. But yet, I can use it again to, you know, share with everybody and inspire people. So, okay. Yeah. You want to know that I was with my husband, that I was doing that, whatever. Okay. I understand it's kind of a big brother. I get that. But, <laughs> but, you know, but everything is a big brother right now. And again, we can 100%. use it to, you know, our advantage and to you know, inspire people very quickly. Yeah. hundred percent. You know, I'm fine with that. Like spy on me. I don't care. I'm, I'm not. Me like, too. Sometimes it's like, okay, I'm on the phone. It's like, okay, world. you listen to me. Whatever, listen to me. Fine. <laughs> yeah. Totally fine. Well, so Weird Victoria, speaking of social media, never for it. now you're 1.7 million views and counting out of Tennessee alone. Wow. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. It still goes up. It's still going up. Yay. I love yeah. it. I have to, Samara, I have to remind her that she has all these views down there because she's gone off and doing her different things. And I'm like, don't forget, when you go out walk that red carpet, you're talking to people, let them know. This is what you have out of Tennessee. Because had we had not gone down there and taken our show out of Los Angeles to go in and we would have never, it would have never happened. That was the That's so true. That's so true. Yeah, we got, we're, that show's doing really well. Uh-huh. Yeah, and then so when I took Katarina down, and you haven't, uh, somebody you haven't met Katarina yet, because um, I'm working on her immigration stuff coming out of Canada, and that's for her, so she's struggling with that. But you know, again, had we had not done those shows down there, we wouldn't be where we are. We would just be another podcast, you know. But at least we have the numbers and the outlets and some of the sponsors. So the good thing, yeah. again, as we're all working together, it, it helps everybody, doesn't it? Absolutely, it does. Hundred percent. I I'm so tired. I, I'm sorry. Like, no problem. And like we were talking before, there's um, you know, sometimes you say yes when you know I mean you kind of have to push yourself a little bit, but then you don't know yeah. what other, you know, things would um, you know, open up. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Sometimes you just you just just you gotta go for it you don't know what can come out of it you don't Absolutely. know and just say yes more than no especially like I, like i said right now if we can give a message to people try to be in the yes energy again this is not this is not a joke we definitely are in a spiritual war so try to go with that exactly. energy you know and again yeah. It's not cheesy. It's true. It's real. It's science. No, it's, I know. You know. It's vibration. 100%. And also, you can call it karma. You can call it whatever you want. If you don't mm -hmm. believe in karma, I personally do. But it's just common sense to think that if you do something good, you know, 
you will have you know from from the from life you know something it's you a universal fully. law yeah. for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction absolutely that's why i always say to people you know there are people that maybe don't believe in karma i said okay don't, you don't have i call it karma you can call it common sense you know you can just put something good out there and it's like you know kind of building your bank you know your bank of good yeah. actions and then you 100%. know there's there's that and then i all, always say to people of course in my personal experience if you want to grow as much as you can as a human beings i try to you know do it as, as again with the most pure heart why because again the more you give the, but i mean again if this is true it, it comes back and even if you don't see that it's coming back right there again i want to give a message of hope i mean so many times maybe i didn't see my project coming you know right there but i continue to do the right things i did the right mm -hmm. things because maybe i had two great parents you know they gave me those teachings i think that you know it's very important that we maintain you know that that we share a the good goals. foundation yes uh, parenting of a good society of course right now we are you know crumbling as society it's true but hey we can we can keep on talking about and reminding parents how important it is you know to raise a good child and and and, uh, and a gentleman or you know a good lady and you know in an old fashioned i'm on that i'm an old soul and i believe you know and in again in values because again there, there there will be good for you you know for again even if you're parent that you're listening to now to, to, to us right now you know it'll come back if you raise a good child life will you know will protect your child it's just how it works it, again i call it karma you can call it yeah, common sense it's, it's like that's exactly it, it the god the universe however you want to whatever you yes. want to call it is just responding to what you're putting out absolutely you know it's not absolutely. yeah so if you're, if you're a good person give your social media links yeah, Victoria social. Renee Hand, across the board. And, sorry, my dad, give me yours because yours are important. Yes, Simone Ethelin, S-I-A-M-O-N-E-T-T-A-L-E-I-N. I am verified all over social media, so if you find other profiles, just look for the blue check, so it's me. And write me. I, I try really to respond to everybody and also through the Wishwell Foundation, the wishwell.org. You know, if you have a project that you would like, you know, to to bring to my attention, please, you know, write it on the on the website so that I can see it personally. Hundred percent, love it. I don't know how we're gonna make it happen. Very but it's my intention to make it happen that she comes to Tennessee with us, Victoria. So it'll be yes, I would love that. And she can bring her husband and her newfound dog too. Yes, me, yes. Because yeah. because. Um, we're all, you know, you and I practice Buddhism, but we're also all dog lovers, and that's very, very important. Yeah, that's so true. This is Brian Sebastian. I want to thank everybody for yeah. coming on because it's about women. It's about us men supporting women. Link knows that, Victoria, doesn't he? <laughs> it's about supporting us. He more. does. <laughs> and but you know when it comes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I know, I know he's listening. Hello, Link. But it's one of those things, like, <laughs> if you see someone without a smile, please give them one of yours because the world needs it because it's really yes. tough out there. And we're in service and we have our outlet and we have to help each other. And I believe in world peace. It took me years to believe in it, but I, I still strongly firsthand believe in that. And that's why I do the things that I do. So for that, this is Brian Sebastian. We will be some more women on TV.tv. ITP247 out of Franklin, Tennessee, and we will see you next week.